Okay, so today I wanted to take you guys through a topic that students find a bit confusing, which is a buffer stock scheme, uh, both what it is and why they would do it. Um, now, this used to be in the old spec in theme one. It's now been moved into macro for theme four. Now, before we talk about what a buffer stock scheme is, you need to understand that one of the issues facing a lot of developing countries is that they are primary product dependent. They rely heavily on the export and sale of a particular primary product. Now, a primary product, what is a primary product? Well, a primary product is anything that is sourced from the earth. Another name for a primary product is therefore a commodity. So you can have soft commodities, so like, I don't know, wheat, barley, you know, agricultural products like tomatoes. And then you've got hard commodities, which are things like copper, zinc, gold, right? Now, if I were to map out the price of commodities over time, so if I just draw a rough diagram over here for you guys to understand this by, so if I have time on the x-axis and the price on the y-axis, typically, especially agri agricultural products, the price does this. It's very, very, very volatile, right? It's very volatile because obviously it's dependent on weather conditions and seasons that are out of your control to a large extent as a farmer. Now, the government will look at this and they will go, okay, there are two extremes here and neither of them are desirable. Extreme number one. So let's go through the first extreme, which is the price is all the way up there. If the price is all the way up there, bear in mind that commodities include food. Therefore, low-income households in the country are now starving. That's obviously not desirable. So the government don't want the, re the price to reach this level. Similarly, the price being all the way down there is a dis disaster because farmers are shutting down, government tax revenue is collapsing, unemployment is skyrocketing. It's obviously, again, not desirable. We don't want the price to be too low. What the government will therefore try to do is try to minimize these fluctuations through a buffer stock scheme. They're going to set something called a maximum price. Let's say over here, we've got a max price here. I'll call it Pmax. And they're going to set a minimum price, let's say hypothetically, over somewhere here. Okay. And this range, by the way, between the maximum and minimum, that range is called the tolerance range, right? It's basically what we allow the price to go up and down between. Now, just a point of clarification, which is very, very important. This is not the same as the maximum price scheme that you would have seen in theme one. Because in theme one, a maximum price, it was literally illegal for anyone to sell their good above that price. And a minimum price in theme one, it was illegal for anyone to sell their price below that price. This is not that. This is basically an indicator. So in other words, the price can go above maximum. So let's say the price ends up somewhere over there. Imagine we're the agency that runs the scheme. An alarm now will go off, which will tell us, tell us the price is too high. We now need to do something we need to intervene in the market to bring the price back down. Vice versa, the price can go below the minimum. It can go somewhere over there. But when it goes below the minimum, again, the alarm basically goes off and it tells us that we need to intervene to try and bring the price back up. Okay, let's understand the logic before we construct the diagram together. The logic of what actually takes place is this. Let's assume initially the market price happens to be P1. Over here, yeah, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Okay, if I draw it on a supply and demand over here, so QP, S1, D1, it's Q1, and that's P1. Okay, my question to you guys is this. Firstly, is the price of P1 too high or too low? Well, clearly it's too low because it's below the minimum, yeah? Now, the slightly harder question is, would that indicate that this was a good harvest or a bad harvest? The answer is that this is probably a, well, not probably, it definitely is a good harvest, that there is so much of this good being produced that it's not scarce. There's loads of it available. The price is therefore very, very low for this good. Let's just make up some numbers. Let's assume that in that particular harvest, let's say this is wheat, I don't know, 10 billion units of wheat were produced okay so there's a lot of wheat in the market hence the price is really really low now the government agency can only do one of two things either they buy up wheat or they sell wheat there's, that's the only two things they can do they can't go around begging people to stop buying it or begging producers to stop selling it in other words if they buy it they become a consumer if they sell it they become a producer think about what i need to shift in order to raise the price should i be buying in which case i would shift demand outwards or should I be selling, in which case I supply out more, so therefore supply shifts outwards? Well, clearly I need to buy because I need to raise the price. So if I do it this way, so if I now buy up some of this stock, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep buying up until the price now goes up to P min. Because as long as the price is raised to P minimum, we're good. That's fine. Yeah. Now, in that context of the 10 billion, imagine that either government go and buy, let's say, 4 billion units. Well, what's left? If I've bought up 4 billion, there's only 6 billion in the market left. In other words, do you guys agree that now the wheat has become more scarce? That is why the market price therefore goes up to P-min. Cool. 
That is scenario number one. Right, let's run through scenario number two together. Do it's over here. That's one. Yeah. Okay, so scenario number two. Let's now assume that the market price for wheat ends up being too high. So let's call it P2 over here. So above the maximum. Yeah, it's somewhere over there. Okay, again, question number one. Is that a good or bad harvest? Well, do you guys agree that if the good is now scarce, then the price is going to be very, very high. So let's just do this with like S2, D2. Okay, so P2. Right, so that price being really high indicates that this was probably a bad harvest. There's a scarcity in the market. Let's say hypothetically that, again, we're back to wheat. Only 1 billion units of wheat are being produced in that given harvest. What does the government agency need to do to bring the price down to maximum? Well, what they need to do is they need to sell from their stockpile. You remember how we bought up 4 billion units earlier? Well, if I now flood the market with those extra 4 billion, there's no, no longer 1 billion in the market. There's now 5 billion, in which case suddenly it's a lot less scarce. What happened there? Well, in that instance, I became a seller. I became a producer. I sold 4 billion units. So I keep selling until I reduce the price to over here. This is P max. And now again, I've managed to reduce the price to the tolerance range. And if I have this range instead, so if the prices are kept maintained between these levels, what ends up happening is that it's much easier for producers to plan ahead. They can now kind of invest with a lot more confidence, knowing that there's definitely going to be like a certain range of the prices are going to be always be operating at. I protect consumers to ensure that consumers can continue to afford, you know, vital things like food, etc. So that, that is the logic of how a buffer stock scheme works. Let's actually now draw the diagram. The diagram is as follows. So let's draw it nice and big to illustrate it really clearly. Okay. Quantity. Price, right. For this diagram, I just want you to draw me a standard downward sloping demarker, okay? And we're gonna ignore the supply for now. What we're instead gonna do is we're gonna set a maximum price somewhere over there. So let's do like something like this. That's max price. Otherwise, by the way, known as the price ceiling, that also works, this is P max. And then the minimum price, let's say, is over here. And that also is known as the price floor in case you read that in a textbook somewhere, okay? This is P min. Okay, right. Now, this is really important for you guys to understand. What we're now going to draw is two perfectly inelastic supply curves. And the logic of why it's going to be perfectly inelastic is we want to basically say, look, if in a given harvest or in a given year, this was the supply, what does the government agency need to do to bring the price back down or raise the price back up? In other words, I want to set the price above maximum once and above minimum once to just show that the government agency need to intervene in both scenarios. So watch this. Do you see the demand curve fits the maximum price over there? Anywhere above that, somewhere over there, if I now draw a perfectly inelastic supply curve, so let's say there, and call that S1, right? Firstly, where does supply equal demand? Do you guys agree that it hits it right there? This is therefore P1, okay? And this is Q1. Okay, first things first. Is that a good or bad harvest? Well, can you guys see that it's very, very scarce? The quantity is very, very low. And therefore, this is a bad harvest. I'm going to just label that in brackets as bad harvest. All right. If it's a bad harvest, what does the government agency need to do to bring the price back down? Well, if there's scarcity in the market, if I now sell more of this commodity or I flood the market with my stockpiles, then suddenly the price can now come down. Now, the exact amount that I need to sell is I need to reduce the price to Pmax. Do you see where it hits the demand curve over there? If you dot down from that point, I'm going to call that Q3. I promise I know how to count. I'm going to reserve two for the other one. And this, therefore, is the distance that they need to sell. That quantity is how much they need to sell, because then as long as the price is within the tolerance range, it's at maximum, we're all good. We're in that range. Scenario number two. Now I want to draw a supply curve, again, perfectly inelastic to show this was the quantity supplied in a given year. And now it needs to hit the demand curve below minimum. So do you see the minimum hits demand there? Anywhere there. So let's do it somewhere like here. Yeah. Forgive my very bent line, but we're going to pretend that's a straight line. And that's Q2. And this is S2. Right. Can you guys see the supply equals demand over there? Is the price too high or too low? Well, clearly the price is too low now. Yeah. Is that a good or bad harvest? It's a good harvest. There's an abundance of the good. A lot of it is being produced. So this in brackets, I can write good harvest. Okay. If it's a good harvest, what should the government agency do? 
Well, the government agency would need to buy up stock so that the good becomes more scarce. They need to become a consumer. And the exact amount they need to buy up is where demand hits the minimum there. And call that Q4. And this is how much they buy. And that, by the way, is the diagram. That's it. Okay, so just to illustrate again, one harvest to show that the price was too high, so they needed to intervene by selling. One harvest showing the price was too low, they intervened by buying. Right. I am going to show you guys in a second a past paper question, a multiple choice question, to just make sure this all makes sense. But just in terms of generic evaluations that work really well for this. One of the big evaluations for a buffer stock scheme is, I guess the question is, why can't I run a buffer stock scheme? Well, the reason why I can't run a buffer stock scheme is because I don't have enough money to be able to influence the market price. To be able to influence the market price for like wheat, you're buying like billions of units, yeah? If I go into a shop and buy like, I don't know, a, a Snickers bar, does that cause the demand for Snickers to shift out and the market price to go up? Well, obviously not, because it's just a very small percentage of the total sales of that market. Whereas if I want to influence the market price for like wheat, if I went and bought 5 billion units of wheat, yes, that will probably have an influence over the market price. And otherwise, this is very, very expensive. But on top of it being very expensive, it's okay, let's say I was a billionaire, say the YouTube money is really coming in, right? I'm doing all right. And suddenly now I decide, you know what? I'm really bored. I'm going to basically try to manipulate the market price of wheat. I'm going to buy it and then sell it at certain points. When I buy it though, do you guys agree that I need to store it? And not only do I need to store it, I need to store it in ideal conditions because otherwise it would go off. It would perish. Hence, it's another cost. It's not just that you buy the stock. You have to also then preserve the stock and basically put it in a warehouse. This is very, very costly. The last evaluation that I think is a really good evaluation about why buffer stock schemes tend to fail is this. Let's, let's run through a little kind of mental exercise together. Let's assume initially there was a good harvest. What should you do? Well, clearly you should buy. Then there's a bad harvest. What should you do? You now sell. And there's another good, good harvest. You buy. Now it's a bad harvest. Sell. Bad harvest. Sell. Bad harvest. Bad harvest. Bad harvest. Do you get the point? In other words, if you have successive bad harvest, you could just run out of stock to sell in which case you have no influence over the market price whatsoever. It, it doesn't always go good, bad, good, bad. And therefore, you may end up in a scenario where if there's successive bad harvests, you just run out of stock to sell and the scheme is complete failure. Right. Let's just run through a past paper question together and I'll wrap up the video. So if I just go my screen. So like I said, this used to be in theme one um, of the old spec. It's been moved into theme four. So we're going to draw our question from theme one. Um, and it's in the June 2016 paper. So here we go, it's unit one, theme one. And I'm just gonna get June 2016 up. It's question number eight. Okay, sorry, my internet is being a bit laggy. Let me move myself to this side. All right, if it will just load, that'd be great. Okay, there we go. So question number eight looks like this. Ah, looks familiar, huh? Right. Um, you know what? Let's do it without the choices, without multiple choices. Let's make it a bit more interesting. Yeah, I, I will show you the answers in a second, and then and then you'll see that your answer was right. But I want to make make it so that you can understand it without even having multiple choice. So the diagram shows a buffer stock scheme in the wheat market. Oh, they copied me. Um, where a government agency intervenes to ensure the price remains between P1 and P2. So P1 here is our minimum. P2 here is our maximum. Yeah. The 2016 harvest S2 leads to. Okay, so. It's a very good idea to annotate diagrams whenever you get diagrams. So can you guys see that, if I put you just draw on this, that at S2, the amount of pr produce is W, and the market price where supply equals demand is basically the, I'm going to call that, I'm going to call it P3, yeah? Okay, I really can't draw with my mouse. Okay, we can pretend that's a really nice coherent three. But anyways, the point is, is the price too high or too low? Clearly the price is too high. Is that a good or bad harvest? Well, that is clearly a bad harvest. The good is scarce. What should the agency therefore do? If you want to basically reduce the price, you sell from your stockpile. So in other words, they need to sell to bring the price back down to the tolerance range to P2. Yeah. Bonus point for you guys. How much exactly should they sell? Well, the exact amount they should sell is from W to X. Can you guys see that? Because demand hits the maximum price P2 there. You dot down from there. They sell this amount, WX. So the answer is going to be that they need to sell from their stockpile. Yeah. Now, uh, bonus question. Um, in 2015, what should the government agency have done? The answer is nothing. That was a trick question. The reason why is because you can see in 2015, it hits demand at PE. That's in the range. There's no need for them to intervene whatsoever. Therefore, 
there is no intervention here. Whereas in 2016, the price is too high, they need to intervene. The answer then very easily is just B, the government agency selling wheat from its stockpile. Hopefully that is super duper clear. And now you feel confident with buffer stock schemes. See you later.